Have you ever wondered how it would look like if the robot took over Earth, or Trump and Biden kissing, or the Eiffel Tower if Van Gogh had painted it? Today I'm going to introduce you to the crazy world of AI generated art, and I'm going to show you how you can get started for absolutely free. Let's get straight into the video. So everything you see on the screen right now is AI generated. So this is not limited to just art, just paintings. You can do graphic design. You can even do photography through this. And the tool we're using today is Midjourney, and you can actually test it out for free. If you want to explore this world, just search something up and you can check the different AI generated photos that the community has made. And the crazy thing about this is it can create things that don't exist. So let's just type in Walter White from Breaking Bad and Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender and see what pops up. So now that you've seen the different things that people have made in this, let's get straight into creating an account yourself. First thing you wanna do is type in midjourney.com in your browser, or you can check the link in the description. Click on join the beta here, and it'll direct you to a Discord page. Don't worry, this is 100% free. If you already have an account, just sign in. Otherwise, we're gonna start from scratch here. So here you can just type in your username. So I'm gonna do always creating, and then verify you're a human. After you do that, it'll ask you to enter your birthday. Once you're done entering it, press done here. And then next, it'll ask you to claim your account. So you've already made a username, but now they're basically asking you to attach an email and password to it so that you can sign in. Now that you're in the Discord, you can access all the different channels they've made. There's channels for beginners, there's channels for just getting started, and there's also support channels in case you run into any issues. So here, if you go over to hashtag test, you'll see in real time people testing this out. You can see different prompts that people are giving. So here you can see Chinese girl under an arc looking the sunset. And so to write your own prompt and you get 25 free ones when you start out, you wanna press slash and you wanna type in imagine. Once you press space, you'll see that there's a prompt box here. And so anything you fill in here, any phrase that AI will use to generate your image. So here I'm gonna type in robots in the middle of a city and if I press enter on my keyboard and you'll see a percentage updating and basically once it's at 100% it's complete and while you do this you can see other people also doing it as well depending on how many people are in the server your stuff might be pushed to the top I'm going to show you a fix for that later but here you can see I have four different options and you can click on them to see it you'll see u1 u2 u3 u4 and then v1 to v4 as well and so basically what this is is U stands for upscale and upscale meaning increase the size of your image. And then V stands for variation. So if you like one of these images, you can create a variation of it that's similar. And then here's a cycle button. So if you want to reset this prompt, they'll create four new images. If you want an easier way to give a prompt without your message being pushed to the top because there's too many people in the server, what you can do is actually direct message the bot. You can see that the bot is the one generating and giving the images. So what you can do is actually click on the bot name type in anything so that it appears in your direct messages. And now we have something like this. And now if I click slash and imagine, I could type in the same things here. Keep in mind that you can only DM the bot if you actually have a paid plan. So you will most likely have to do it within the channel if you are looking to do this for free. Now that we have the basics down, I'm gonna show you how you can check other people's prompts and basically take inspiration from them if you like what you're seeing. And this will help you out if you're trying to create a specific artwork or a specific image. If you go back to midjourney.com and click on community showcase this time, you'll be able to see different images from the community and even yours will show up here. So if you hover over, you'll see that they have a prompt here. You can click on these three dots and press copy prompt. Take in mind, even if you copy someone's prompt, it won't generate the exact same thing because this is artificial intelligence. They are just creating random stuff using your prompt. So let's say we do copy this prompt. So we're gonna click on the three dots and press copy prompt. So here we're gonna type in slash imagine and we're gonna paste in the exact prompt to the one we want. So here it created the prompt. You can see it actually is very similar, which will actually teach you how to add certain advanced prompts. So if you actually go over to copy command here, and if you paste it, it's actually a little bit different than what we did. The command didn't have nine by 16 resolution. So I'm gonna show you how you can add these advanced prompts so that you can resize and also customize your image to your liking. If you wanna check out the full list of advanced prompts, just check the link in the description. There's a lot of stuff that you can actually mess around with. Here you can see the different parameters you can set for imagine so you can set the quality you can stylize it more you can also change the aspect ratio as well by default it does come as a square so now we're going to create a proper prompt and we're going to use some advanced prompts in order to achieve this so here we're going to press slash and imagine and the prompt i have is bob from the minions robbing a convenient 
convenience store. So this is something that a beginner would type in, but now we're gonna add other stuff as well. So one of my favorite prompts is actually Octane Render. If you wanna replicate a certain style or an artist or a resolution or a theme, you can just type it in. Just make sure you add a comma. So here I'm also gonna type in highly detailed backlight, for example, cyberpunk city in the background. You can also make him centered in the middle. To add the advanced prompts, you wanna press space and double dash and then type in the prompt. So here for aspect ratio, you can see, you can type in something like this, double dash AR space 16 by nine. So this is like a typical horizontal photo. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So two dashes AR 16, nine. And you wanna make sure that your two dashes here have no spaces in between the prompt or else it won't run. We can also type in stylized. So it'll be a little bit more dramatic, a little less structured. So we're gonna type in that as well. So once again, we're gonna type in space, double dash, stylize. And then here there's different values. So I'm gonna go for 20,000. And then we're gonna do one more, which is uplight. So typically, if you go through some of these, you notice that they're very detailed, especially when you upscale them. And so what you can do is to remove some of that detail when upscaling, let's just say you don't want every single detail in the sky, you can add a prompt called uplight, which will basically remove that. So here, I'm gonna press enter. And while it loads, I'm gonna show you some other prompts. Another prompt you might wanna know is quality. And this is because it can make rendering out the images a lot faster. By default, the quality is set at one, but let's just say you want to render it out twice as fast. You can just type in double dash, Q space 0.5, or you can do 0.25 for four times as fast or four times less quality. Or to make it easier, you can use the fast prompt so that it just sets it at 0.25. This way, if you wanna test out prompts and get results faster, you can do that as well. So here you can see it loaded, but it doesn't actually have Bob from the minions. So we might wanna reword what we entered because Bob is not here at all. So I'm gonna copy and paste this entire thing. And we're gonna type in the same thing, but I'm gonna say Bob the minion this time. And then we're gonna press enter. And you can see here as it loads, you can actually see this yellow figure, which is Bob. You can also set different prompts. Like you want a close up shot for the thumbnail. I actually used a certain prompt where I said close up on the eyes. You can also list stuff in the background as well. There's so much different possibility with this. So here you can see it got a little bit better, except it still doesn't really do what we want, which is robbing a convenience store. And the reason why is if you have a prompt that's a little bit too specific, it won't know what to do. For example, I said robbing a convenience store, but somehow there has to be a city in the background. So maybe if we remove city from the background, it actually gets better. So now if we type in the same prompt, remove Bob from the minions and just do Bob the minion and also remove cyberpunk city in the background and then press enter, it'll be a drastically different result. Now we actually have a way better version because there is a less detail. And so here you can see, you actually probably see Gru over here. Someone's standing over there, but you can see he has a mask on. So I really like this bottom version right here. So we're gonna upscale version four. And I also like how this looks like, but I don't want this specific image. So what I can do is I can go over to V2, which is the second image here and press V2. Now basically it'll give me a different variation of that same photo. So here you can see we have an upscaled version. We can press upscale to max if we want an even higher resolution. Solution. And you can also make different variations of this specific image as well. As for V2, you can see we have different variations of the same photo. And so it just changes specific things. So now we're done, we can make new variations or we can go ahead and save this. So you don't wanna actually save it directly from here. You wanna press on it and press open original. This way you have a way larger photo and then you wanna save it. So here we have four different versions. And the main thing that's actually changing is actually his goggles here. So if you like a certain goggle, you can choose it. If you do wanna do stuff like graphic design, I noticed that it's not really good with text or faces when it comes to specifying like certain people or certain text. I did find that if you do wanna create something with text, you want to type in the text in quotations. So for example, we can do always creating in quotations. And so I can say movie poster with text always creating. And then I could do stars, stranger things, lightning, 8K, for example, right? Let's just say I want that. I can press enter. You can do like Van Gogh. You can do Star Wars. You can do whatever you want here. So while that renders out, let's talk about pricing. When it comes to pricing, you get a free trial. I believe you get 25 queries, meaning you can type in 25 different searches. This is a great way to test it out. You can also just make multiple Discord accounts, although I don't know if that is against the terms and services. If you're looking for the pricing plans, just press slash and subscribe, press enter. And here it'll allow you to open the subscription 
Foundation page where it'll give you details. So here you can see the basic membership is 10 US dollars. And you can see both of these, you get general commercial terms. I would look into that if you are planning to resell anything. The standard membership actually has unlimited use while the basic membership has 200 images a month. As for the corporate membership, the main benefit is that anything you input can be set to private. And what I mean is without this plan, anything that you enter will be public and you actually can't delete it. See here, you can see this is a public profile and I actually can't delete any of it. There is no delete button and they do this on purpose. And here you can see our poster. It actually didn't show always creating. So we might have to cycle through this, but you can see it definitely followed the theme. Even in this updated version, it doesn't really have the text written correctly and the other examples don't have text. That might be because of my prompt. You can actually check out the community showcase for other poster ideas and you can copy and paste the prompt because some of them actually Actually work out pretty well. That's about it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and check out my channel for all things content creation, whether that's graphic design, photography, or videography. That's about it. I'll see you in the next one.